If we want our robot to follow a line, the first thing we need is a line. We use standard electrician's tape, bought at the local hardware store. The big one cost $5.50, the small one $2.20. This is a circuit of white tape laid on brown carpet, which will work nicely. But we have to be careful about one thing. The electrician's tape sticks best to itself rather than to the carpet. And when we lay it out on the carpet, we can often lay it out in a stretched form. And if we then go away, have a snack, we will come back and we'll find the tape often lifted in the corner like this. Now the problem about this is the sticky side comes upwards. And if we happen to tread on it, this is what happens. And we end up with no, no circuit at all. So this means we must try and avoid these where the tape is actually crossed. Putting a gap like this may help. Let's try this out and see what happens. It's going along nicely, but whoops, the gap is too big and it doesn't work. OK, well let's put a gap more carefully cut so the gap's very small and this seems to work. It works nicely in that direction. Let's try the other direction as well. Just seeing... Yes, and that works beautifully too. Let's one way around it. We can also use black tape on a white background. Our robot will follow the line just as it will on a white tape line, but it will follow the other side of the line. If we have a more complicated maze, we'll probably want to put it on something a bit more permanent than carpet. We can use a large piece of flat board, a large piece of cardboard. Another alternative are these foam pieces that I bought cheaply at a discount shop. They fit together nicely uh, and they'll stand up to abuse in a classroom. They're blank on the other size and they go together nicely to form a line maze like this that because of their clipped together they won't be kicked about by student feet. I use black electrician's tape to make this maze. Our robot can follow the left hand or right hand side of the line depending on whether it's greater than or less than. Reversing this sign will cause the robot to follow the opposite side of the line. In this case it's following the right hand side of the line. This is normal speed and very shortly it will change to four times the speed. We have now changed back to normal speed. What this demonstrates is that it's possible to follow a line with right angles and blank ends to a line with only one light sensor. And just to show this is not a fluke, we will reverse the sign in the bit of code we've shown you and we'll follow the left hand side of the line. Reversing this code from 2 to 4, less than, will now again put the robot down and you can't see it at the moment, it was not very obvious, but it's actually following the left hand side of the line, not the right hand side. But you will see this in just a moment or two when it goes to the left hand side there. there. This is a different path to the other one because the left hand side of the line is different from the right.
Handling right angled corners and blank ends to lines like this is not easy and you've got to get the program and the build just right to be able to do this well. It's real Lego engineering because it's build plus programming not just programming, not which is Lego computer science, not just build, which is Lego construction. Lego engineering is that combination. You need both to get this task done well. Our robots have only followed black and white lines. To find out about following coloured lines, go to the next tutorial.